It is human sensitivity that drives the pursuit of ever greater beauty. Nishiki Koi are among the aesthetic wonders of Japan, and through increasingly sophisticated techniques, that beauty continues to evolve. Ceaseless effort in the service of beauty, as products of human creativity and aesthetic judgment, Nishiki Koi are truly living works of art. Japan, Hiroshima, the international city of peace and the economic and political hub of the Chugoku region. The town of Daiwa is a mountainous suburb of Hiroshima and the home of the Sakai fish farm, a farm devoted entirely to the breeding and raising of ever more entrancing and breathtaking Nishiki Koi. Sakai Fish Farm covers a total of 30 hectares, making it the largest koi farm in Japan. Its size and success derive from the know-how and the passionate love of koi of all who work here. Highly competitive Nishiki Koi shows are held throughout Japan. These draw first-rate competitors from overseas as well. But when the judging is over and the winners are announced, several of the top awards invariably go to koi raised on the Sakai fish farm. That one's a Sakai. This common phrase is high praise for the koi and for the farm. Gorgeous colors, elegant conformation enhanced by bold, expressive patterns and size. Sakai's two-year-olds can be 55 centimeters. Red and white, Taisho and Showa Sanshoku, the entire spectrum of breeds. At many of the top shows, the fish that emerged the all-round champion will be a Sakai Nishiki Koi. This level of quality, nearly over a century old, has built tremendous trust among dealers and fans. Home base for the Sakai fish farm is the town of Daiwa, in the city of Hiroshima. The farming of koi is an integral part of town history. This is a picture of the koi taken to Hiroshima for viewing by the Japanese crown prince in 1926. The Sakai fish farm began farming koi in the early 20th century. Hiroji Sakai, the current president, and Yoshimichi Sakai, his younger brother and managing director, inherited that experience and tradition. But they themselves have brought the process several steps closer to perfection. Today, the farm is filled with the vitality of aspiring young koi farmers, doing their best to learn the skills of the two masters. In the end, the raising of excellent koi is accomplished through the warmth of human hands. Only a passion for koi can keep producing ever more beautiful, ever more refined and elegant masterpieces. Join us now for a tour of that process. It's May. Spawning is about to begin. The Sakai fish farm hurries to prepare for this busy, all-important season. The breeding of good Nishiki Koi is quite similar to the breeding of racehorses, and these fish are thoroughbreds. It takes imagination to look at a potential pair and predict the offspring that might result from the match. Pairing is a process that tests the insight and vision of those involved. <laughs> In the end, 40 matches are made, and to each is entrusted dreams of ideal young. Each pair is the result of wide-ranging study and the flexible accommodation of numerous vital factors. Not all the breeders are Sakai Koi. The farm goes to great lengths to bring in the best from outside as well. This year, all eyes are on Loran. 
a non-Sakai female that showed brilliantly enough to become twice the overall grand champion in the Tokyo show of the Japan Nishikikoi Association. まず国家区体系式祭の質そうして反問の順番ではないかと思います。まあそういうオストメスの親子を選定しまして何人かでいろいろ討議しまして後輩を行います。これがまあ大体一年中の作業の中では一番大事なことではないかと思います。Koi usually spawn at night. Male and female are side by side. It won't be long now. The pair are given their own pool, and their spawning is eagerly awaited. In this pool, Loran acts as if her time is at hand. The staff watch her intently, not looking away for a moment. Natural spawn begins. About an hour later, to increase the certainty of fertilization, experienced hands assist the process. The spawning koi are lifted from the pool and anesthetized. First, sperm is taken from the male, every effort being taken at all times to protect both the parents and their young. Hey. Next, the eggs are gently squeezed from the female. This is Lorraine. With these eggs, she is bringing in a wonderful new bloodline. Here and now, we are witnessing the creation of the Nishikikoi that will dominate the coming decades. The moment is pregnant with that potential. The now fertilized eggs are returned to the pool where they will hatch. This day's task took until two in the morning. Throughout the spawning season, the staff works until morning, day after day. Nishikikoi begin spawning in early May and continue for about three months. Along with the tasks involved for the actual spawning, pools must be prepared to receive the fry. These pools are cultivated like gardens. Each is given the right blend of fertilizers, then filled with clean water. Meanwhile, in the hatching pools, the fry will hatch about one week after fertilization. Here are some eggs just before hatching. Two eyes stare out from the egg in the middle, barely a millimeter long. Some of these Sakai Koi, less than one centimeter, when they hatch, will grow to 60 centimeters in two years. The tiny fry are carefully classified by breed and parentage, then released into the fry pools. The carefully cultivated water in the fry pools includes rich nutrients from the earth and plenty of plankton. The fry will live here for some time. Throughout the summer, the nutrients in the pools will be supplemented by feed specially developed for fry. 
the state of the water, the condition of the fry, a long list of factors must be carefully monitored and controlled. That's why the fry pools are always built close to the staff. This is a rigid rule at the Sakai fish farm. In time, nets are dropped in the fry pools and the young koi are pulled in. The time has come for thinning. Some of the fry are obviously growing faster than others. The selection process begins. Only about 3% of these fry will make the first cut. Thinning is a harsh task, but essential to the creation of living works of art. The highly trained eyes of the staff seek and select emerging patterns on the still infant koi. The koi selected have truly begun the journey toward becoming a Sakai Mishki koi. All the conditions for rapid growth have been met. The koi will stay in the fry pools through the summer and until the fall. Well into fall, this year's Nishiki Koi are transferred to pools in a warm greenhouse. At this point, they already average 15 centimeters, but they are still just babies. They receive the protection and nurturing they need through a combination of loving care and scientific management. they receive automatically from this feeder is an exclusive optimum blend of four types of feed all developed here at the Sakai farm. This farm was also the first to feed koi vegetables as a source of plant fiber. Water quality, of course, is controlled with extreme care. These oyster shells are used in the filter to help balance the pH. Sophisticated and expensive oxygenation equipment, heat exchangers, and other devices are used to scientifically produce the exact water that years of experience has taught them is ideal. Throughout the winter, in their warm greenhouse, Sakai Nishiki Koi continue their remarkable growth. The Nishiki Koi greet their first spring. They average 40 centimeters in length. Here are some of the jumbo yearlings. From this point on, slowly but steadily, last year's fry are shipped to new owners. Of course, most remain at the farm, where they will grow bigger still. The secret to the size and strength of the koi that stay two years or more are the wild ponds in the mountains. The Sakai fish farm has over 60 of these artificial but specially built natural ponds. Among the great blessings of this area is its water. This is the source of the Ashida River that runs through the Hiroshima Bingo region. It springs forth rich in mineral nutrients.
On this land, making use of this precious water, the Sakai fish farm continues to develop its wild ponds. The future of the Sakai farm is built on this advantageous environment through tireless growth and development. The staff are mobilized for the construction as well. The raising of good koi involves many jobs and plenty of hard work. In the spring of 1998, 10 new ponds are completed. These will be landscaped and finished just like a park. Leaving the fish farm pools, they have always known the young koi move to the ponds in the mountains. This will be their new home. These Sakai wild ponds will grow true Sakai koi. Each of these koi is a potential masterpiece, released with full hope and confidence. When they are next pulled in, they will be more beautiful and impressive than ever. The release into the wild, refinement, elegance and size. Here they will absorb the energy of the pond, the mountain and the earth. Last summer, these koi were in the fry pools. This year, they are swimming free and growing big and strong in the wild ponds. But the work of the staff doesn't end, of course. Even an automatic feeder requires careful management. The skillful, caring hands of farmers, plus the natural endowment of the ponds, only farms with both can raise good Nishki koi. Tasks at the fish farm are many and complex. In 1997, a researcher from the United States came to write a report on the diseases of Nishki Koi. The Sakai fish farm takes such diseases extremely seriously. Much effort is poured into fighting any disease that might attack their koi. The management system is designed for prevention. Ultimately, the key is people and the extent to which they are able to pay unswerving attention to every factor. This effort goes on literally 24 hours a day. The Sakai staff watch over their koi by day and by night. The Nishki Koi in the wild ponds are greeting their second fall. It is time for the harvest. Up to their chests in the ponds, the staff surround the Koi and pull them up. This is it, but the result of all their hard work is coming to the surface now. The Nishki Koi, raised to fulfill the dreams of the staff and the fans, are pulled in one by one. Some of those released at one year are already 55 centimeters. Some released at two years have grown to 65. This is the moment when the staff experience the emotional reward of their labors. One by one, they greet the fish they raised with such tender care. Their hearts are full of joy as they see the gorgeous koi they themselves created. The Sakai koi are in! 
This is the news so many have been waiting for. The auction held three times a year at the Sakai farm is attended by dealers from around Japan and around the world. Tension runs high among the staff. These are nishikikoi they raise themselves. How will they be valued by the experts? Before long, anticipation turns to joy. But at the same time, there is sorrow in parting with these koi they have come to know and love. やっぱり君は本当に恋が好きかどうかと尋ねます。あの、曖昧な返事だと採用しません。本当に恋の好きな連中が集まってきているま集団です。Koi are said to reflect the emotion and love of the people around them. If that is true, doesn't the beauty of Sakai Koi reflect the love and devotion of the staff? Nishikikoi are raised with the warmth of human hands, sometimes plunging into freezing water, sometimes digging up the hard earth. These are the hands of people doing their best, caring about their work, and serving their dreams and hopes. Nishikikoi respond to that effort by presenting their most beautiful forms. Nishikikoi, living art, created by human technique, imagination, and passion. This is where a century of experience combines with the vitality of youth. This is where a staff of about ten concentrates exclusively on raising Sakai Nishikikoi. To make your dreams come true, and to make our dreams come true, the Sakai Fish Farm will continue to pour its full energy into the world's most beautiful Nishikikoi.